Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing great. In this video, we're doing something very interesting. We are building a very simple Golang project and we're going to dockerize it. Okay. So we won't be running the project on our base machine. We'll be running it on Docker with the same ports, 8081 or something like that. Okay. So uh, Docker brings a lot of benefits. So it's I uh, usually recommend using Golang with Docker a lot of times. So um, now this project that we'll build, I'll build it with you. It'll be a very simple Golang server, which will have just two routes, a root route and a slash high route. That's all it'll do. And uh, when we'll visit this project, uh, when the server is running, when we'll visit this project on our um, browser, it will show us uh, the route that we're visiting. So very, very simple, extremely simple, right? Now, uh, so the Docker file that we'll be writing will be very simple because the project obviously is very simple and this project will have no external dependencies. Now, if you want to Dockerize a project that is slightly more complex that has external dependencies, then I'll be making a video a few days down the line where uh, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to add a few more steps to tackle you know, the mod files. Okay, okay, mod download and mod in it and all of those things. I'll, I'll show you how to handle that. Now, this is, like I said, uh, for beginners, for uh, you know somebody who is wanting to dockerize a very simple Golang project. And then uh, uh, a few days uh, uh, you know, down the line, I'll create another uh, video for Golang and Docker where I'll show you how to dockerize a, a very complex project which is using multiple databases like let's say Redis or Postgres or MongoDB, you know. Uh, and then uh, a few more days down the line, I'll show you another project where you can use Apache Kafka and Apache Spark along with Golang and uh, along with TensorFlow, for example. So more complicated build, right? So you, we'll use Docker Compose and then we'll even use Docker Swarm to have multiple different uh, containers running and orchestrating them. Uh, and then I'll build you up to a point where you'll be using Docker uh, Docker along with Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes will uh, help you manage all your uh, microservices. So we'll build a microservice project. We'll deploy them, uh, deploy the microservices on Kubernetes using Docker uh, along with Prometheus, uh, Grafana and uh, uh, I think it's called Sentry uh, for the front end for uh, for React, uh, you know, logging. It's called Sentry, so we'll be using Sentry as well and Grafana and Prometheus. So you'll have basically a completely working uh, production setup on your cloud. So I'll I'll build you up to that part. So it has to start somewhere, right? So we're starting with a very simple Docker file, and then I'll build you up to the part where you have where you have like a huge project going on uh, on your cloud on AWS. Okay. So uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm, uh, by the way, in the project, uh, in, in, the, in a place in my computer where I usually keep my Golang files. So if you're very new to Golang, then basically this is your Go path and this is the project. And inside that, I have a folder called hello and inside that I'll create another folder called docker test. All right. And we'll cd into docker test and then I'll open up this project in my VS Code. I think I already have a VS Code open, so I'll just cancel it and I'll create this file here. So we're inside Docker uh, test folder. And here what we'll do is we'll create two files, main.go file and our Docker file. Now, if you're a complete beginner to Docker, you have to know that uh, the Docker file, when you write Docker file, the D will be capital, F will be small. That's a uh, best practice. And um, and if you need to Golang again, uh, main.go file is the most important file in your project where basically you're, you'll enter the project from your main.go file. And uh, the purpose of the Docker file will be to create an executable version of our main.go file. So that, that means we have to build the main.go file, all right? Uh, so let's get started. Let's build a very simple project. Now, uh, in, in your main.go file, the most important thing, the, the way you begin your file is writing package main. And then you have your import statement where you're going to be importing a couple of packages. Now with Golang, uh, everything is very, very modular. So even if you, if you, even if you have to print something, uh, the command for printing does not exist in Golang natively. So you have to use a package called FMT. So we'll use the FMT package. If you want to log out errors, we have to use a package called log. And if we want to start a server, a basic server. Now, if you want to start a basic server and you, if you don't know how that works, then you can, like I said, you can go and check out my other video, uh, building a basic server in Golang in 20 minutes. Or or uh, I'm, I'm going to keep this video so simple that you probably might not even want to watch, uh, have to watch that video, all right? So we'll be using the net slash HTTP package to start the server. And uh, then we'll use HTML 
to print out a HTML response on to the browser. Like I told you, you know, when we'll run the server on localhost 8081, when we'll visit it from our browser, we want to see something right on the browser. Because I'm not sure if you're very comfortable with Postman, so I'll show you how to open it up on uh, your browser. So that's why we we'll use the HTML package. So the most important function uh, in your main file is func main, where which is basically the entry point into your uh, program. And here we'll have our HTTP dot handle func, which basically helps us to handle our routes. So the first route is the root route, right? So when we say localhost 8080 or 8081, whatever, and slash, that is the root route where, uh, you know, which is basically the first route in your project, the root route. And here you'll build a func, a function. Now the function, this function basically takes two things. One is W and the other is R. W is the response that you'll send back to the user and R is the request that the user sends to the Golang server. So W is HTTP dot response writer. Just check the spelling, it's response writer. So I made a mistake there. And this is HTTP dot request. Now the request, you usually pass it as a pointer. So if you're not aware of pointers, I highly recommend that you complete your go tour uh, and then you'll understand what pointers are. But you don't uh, uh, like this is the only place we're using pointer. So even if you don't know it, it's basically we're sending a reference uh, of the request to this function, right? Not the request itself. Anyways, so we'll say fmt dot f print f. And if somebody visits this route on the browser, all we want to do is print to the front end the response and the response will be hello and comma the route so uh, this basically helps us to uh, this helps the fprintf command helps us to do two things at the same time like println and sprintf so it uh, basically helps you to uh, the format the string and also print it at the same time right so for, by formatting i mean uh, hello and slash if you want to put the slash here whatever is coming here this is the variable and this can be replaced with the variable so the variable we'll have it in html dot escape string r dot url dot path so uh, in your browser uh, the url that you're visiting which is basically slash the path of that which is slash basically is, is going to take that the url will be the complete thing right localhost 880 and the path will be the slash path so here we'll just print out the slash right so we'll take the escape string uh, and we'll take the slash part and we'll just show it here so hello and slash whatever route that you're on so hello and comma that route right that's what we're printing here then we'll say http dot handle func and we'll create another route for slash hi and he where we'll f handle this with the function so the function again takes two things w and r and w is basically http dot response writer and r is a pointer again to http dot request all right and here you're just going to say fmt dot f printf and w comma high so if anybody visits this route which is slash high you just print out high to the front uh, you know front end that's all you do and what we want to do is we want to start up our server so we'll say listen and serve on port 8081 comma nil so uh, with golang uh, starting a server is very simple it's just one single statement that is it one single line and many people don't understand it they think oh it can't be this much right there has to be something else but no this is it <laughs> this is how you start a server with golang it's extremely simple and we're just going to wrap this in log.fatal so that if there's a fatal error it can log it out so there are, here are these four packages that we're using we've used them all in our project so this was our main.go file it's going to be very simple like i said that's all our golang file does now let's start working on our docker file so the, the, the mechanics of a Docker file is basically you have to pull an image from somewhere from the Docker, uh, you know, registry or, or the place where all the Docker files are kept, all the Docker images are kept. You take that image and this image basically uh, saves you the, the task of uh, taking a, a Docker container and then 
you know installing ubuntu and installing golang on top of it so somebody has an image already which has golang uh, ubuntu and golang installed already in it so we'll get that file from somewhere so we'll say from golang which is the name of the image the, the name of the image is 1.12.0 which is the version of golang in that image and the image is coming from alpine so alpine usually has the the like the most maintained and the best images on uh, on the docker registry so i use alpine images for node.js and for uh, kafka and spark and all of those different things anyhow so you'll the next thing is you'll run uh, so whenever you want to run a command run an ubuntu command for example you'll say run and then you'll run the command so you'll say mkdir and slash app all right there's a space here and we'll say slash app that that means that it's going to create a new folder called app inside this image so it gets an image from docker it creates this uh, app direct uh, you know directly inside it and now what we'll do is we'll add whatever is there in this file in, in, on our computer so docker can uh, work on your computer and at, at this at the uh, image level at the same time it, it can connect both of them so we'll say that take the main.go file or take whatever is there in this folder right now which we can specify using dot and, and take all of that into the image so we'll say uh, add dot whereas whatever is there in this folder and slash take it to the app folder inside the file inside the image all right now uh there's a command uh, in docker called work directory where you're telling docker that hey this is our most important directory this is our working directory so all the commands that we'll be running uh, need to be running on working directory all right inside this is all inside the image so we'll say ash slash app so that means our app is our working directory all right now uh if you were on your local machine how would you run your main.go project you'd say go run main.go or first you'd build uh, the main.go file you'll get an executable file and then you'll run the executable file right so let's let's do that let's do whatever we do on our uh, local machine on docker so we'll say run go build minus o main and space dot so it's just going to build an executable file from our main.go file that's all it's going to do all right and then we have uh, something called a cmd which helps us run a command so here we are saying go inside our app directory and run the main executable file that we will get from this fifth step and this is it guys this is uh, the entire docker file there are only six steps very straightforward simple to understand simple to follow and uh, you can build on top of this so if you have uh, you know uh, your mod files you you'll probably if you're a little more experienced you'll already know what to do you'll just have to you know write a couple of more commands for getting those um, you know uh, anything uh, initializing your mod files and uh, you know go more tidy and all of those things right uh, but I'll, like I said, I'll cover that in an upcoming video where I'll show you how, you know, I'll, I'll keep uh, increasing on the complexity of the Docker files, like with, with Compose, with Swarm, with Kubernetes. So I'll take you to a place where you'll be able to completely manage huge uh, Golang microservices project. Like more than, so the, the project that I'm working on as in my own product, uh, Dominate.ai, you know, we have more than 100 microservices running on that. And like all of those microservices are like really serious and really big. And some of them have uh, TensorFlow and uh, machine learning, huge, uh, huge amount of machine learning and uh, computer vision running in them. All right. Uh, by the way, I'll make uh, videos on uh, Golang computer vision. GoCV is the name of the package. So I have those planned up. Anyhow, let's go to our terminal. And here we have uh, all we have to do now is we just have to run a Docker file. Right. So we'll say Docker build minus t and the name of our project is docker test and we'll say dot so this will create an image called docker test for us it'll take a while it's getting this image for us from alpine from docker.io slash library so this is the registry that i was talking about and by the way you can uh, you can build your own registry so what we have done for our uh, product is that we have created we have created an aws ec2 instance and we have created our own registry where we'll keep our own private images right which are not open to public uh, and that's that's how we store it so docker.io.library uh, library is the public repository where anybody can 
uh, you know get those images from but if you want to create your own registry for docker uh, images for your own personal images that your projects are going to be using you can keep them on the cloud create by creating your own docker registry so this is taking a while uh, and this is supposed to take a while by the way so what i'll do is i'll just pause this video and then i'll come back once it's done so i waited a while and then what i saw was there's an error here it says undefined HTTPS. So this is a problem with my main.go file. So I'll uh, head over to my main.go file and it says HTTPS is undefined because it was supposed to be HTTP. So that's my mistake. And now what we'll do is we'll run the program again and then I'll wait again and then I'll uh, come back. So I waited and I can see now that it finished with no errors. That means it's perfect everything works perfectly fine just to make sure we'll say docker image ls and here we can see our image so now if you get this uh, output where you, you can see your docker test image that we just built together if you can see it then that means everything is okay no need to worry but if you don't see it uh, just go through the entire process again uh, there could be some error or if you're getting any specific error you can just uh, google it out and if uh, I've, I've tried to explain every single line in this project, but if you still haven't understanding, uh, understood anything, you can just put it in the comments below. I'll try to explain it to you. And uh, so all uh, that we are left to do now is to run this project. So there's a command called docker run and it, what it does, it takes an image, docker image, and it builds a container out of it and runs that container. All right. So let's do that then. Docker run minus p where we'll do some port mapping we'll say on our machine run it on 8080 uh, whereas on docker it's 8081 and here is minus uh, it and we'll say the name of the image so it's docker test in our case let's run it i'll create a new window uh everything is uh, it doesn't give any errors that means everything is working fine and let's say localhost 8080 so it says hello comma slash and if we say slash hi it says hi everything is working perfectly on docker on localhost 8080 on our machine that means we were successful so if you want i think i should i can take you through the entire project again once more so we built a main.go file where we had two handle functions one for slash one for hi and then we started our uh, server like this with a docker file we uh, imported or pulled in a docker file from uh, an image from the main docker uh, library and then we created an app folder inside it we added everything that we had in our folder on our local machine to the app uh, folder there we told docker that this is your working directory all the all the uh, you know uh, commands that we'll run which is these two commands that we'll run from now on will be inside docker uh, work directory which is slash app all right and then we build our main file which gives us an executable file and then we get uh, and then we can you know cmd and uh, run that executable file as well so i hope uh, everything makes uh, sense everything is clear and uh, do subscribe to the channel because like i said you know we have a lot of stuff coming up uh, with uh, with docker and uh, golang and thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next episode